Hello, my name is Andre Rochal. I'm a solution consultant for MuleSoft. Today, I want to show you how can use how can we use MuleSoft to connect to Oracle EBS. So, what you're looking at here is our AnyPoint Studio. This is the design IDE um, where I would go in and create my integration flows. Um, in this case, what I have on the right are the different connectors, different components I can drag and drop over to my um, left side screen here to build my flow. So in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag an HTTP endpoint. So this is um, just an example of how I'm going to, going to start my flow. Um, this could be done multiple different ways via, you know, a file coming into a specific folder or we can do polling or I can have this run on a schedule. Um, it could be you know, off of a JMS type queue. So the flows can start multiple ways, but just for this exercise, I'm gonna call an HTTP endpoint. And when this flow starts, what we're gonna do is I'm going to call Oracle EBS and get some information. Once that information comes in, I'm going to transfer that and translate that into a JSON format, just so we can view the actual data. Right, so the first step, that I'm going to do here is configure my HTTP listener. In this case, I'm listening on 8081, which is the port on my local system, and then I'm going to give it um, give it a path here, which is I'm just going to call this go. So this is the endpoint that I'm going to hit for my flow to start. Um, and then second step is setting up my Oracle EBS connector. Um, if in this case I have one defined, if you didn't have defined, if you didn't already have that defined, you click on the plus icon. In my case, I'm gonna click on the edit icon. But what this allows me to do is specify my, you know, host name, credentials, ports, etc. In this case, I have hard coded it, but you know, you could actually use um, a format like this to say, you know, port, for for instance and then this would come off of an external properties file, so we're not hard coding it. Uh, but just for testing purposes, um, this is what I'm using right now. And then the second set of information it needs are, you know, my responsibility name and my responsibility application name in here, okay? I can click on test connection over here to ensure I have proper connectivity and validate that before I move forward. Um, and then the second step is defining the operation. So we set up the connector configuration. Now we're going to um, define the operation. In this case, I'm going to call get organization and pass in a specific ID. I'm going to pass in something that's valid, right? Um, this is just for testing purposes, but in most likely scenario, these would, again, coming from, this would coming from my you know, payload. So if, you know, my payload had um, org ID or something like that, here's how I would define that field to be dynamic. In my case, just for purely testing purposes, I'm going to hard code this one value that I know exists and save it. So my error message here is gone. And then the last step is to configure my transformation engine. Oops, let me back up. So one of the things, right, the biggest advantage of using a connector, it's, it, it abstracts all the details, so I don't have to be an Oracle EBS expert. I can go to my SMEs and have them set it up, and I could use my connectors to build my integration. And that's one of the biggest value meals I'll provide is we don't expect people building in integrations to be expert in this subject matter, and tool can bring in as much information. So in this case, when I have my Oracle EBS selected and I said I wanted get organization, what it's going to do is it's going to, you know, we have the section here to refresh my metadata. It's actually going to go, um, you know, ping that instance and pull in all the uh, metadata related to the operation that I wanted to do, right? So I now have visibility into all the different fields that this operation would return um, without knowing the detailed integrity of how Oracle EBS works, right? So the next step that I would do is go in here and take a look at over here on the left all the fields that have come in and then I can define my metadata and start mapping mapping them and 
you know, if there, I know if I know there's a specific format that I want to translate that to, I can come in here and then, you know, say, hey, I want to add a new type. I'm just going to say test. Um, create a type and then I can in here I can point to I can point to a JSON file or a flat file or CSV something I can map this field to right and we'll keep it simple just say you know I, I want to map I want to extract this one value out of this and then gives me the string and if for example you know if I wanted to get the CEO name or that organization that I was talking to I can now drag and drop and it gives me and it generates the mapping for me right uh, that, that's a very simple example let's see if I can pick something a little bit more complex I'm going to scroll down here and we'll say that I wanted this contact number right when I pull this it actually you know my, my mapping here changed right and I can go down further down and I'll see what we'll do this error code to now right I don't need to map out all the details this drop I can do that by dragging and dropping but uh, to keep it simple I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say that I just want to have visibility into everything so I'm simply I'm gonna dump my payload into a JSON format right so it automatically does the translation for me as well in this case I'm taking the entire payload and mapping that into a JSON format so this data weave component allows me to do drag and drop mapping which I was showing you earlier or you know if you want you can come in here and then override it as well so after everything's done um, I can come in here click on this white box in the middle and say run my project it's asking me to save this um, wait for this application to deploy locally and make sure my instance is running so what I'm expecting here is when I click on go let me make this a little bit smaller when I make you know when I click on go in here I want certain things to happen down at the bottom and I want to see JSON value return right so down here you could see it's actually trying to initialize my Oracle EBS client it took about what five seconds to do that and then boom Right, so here's all the detailed um, information that my that's coming from Oracle. So, so pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I don't I don't need I didn't need to know the details of Oracle and everything. Um, I know there's the one requirement that we need specifically to Oracle. Right, not all, all connectors have that requirement, but specifically specific specific to Oracle, um, you need to make sure in this case talk to your you know EBS admin and ask them to generate a wisdom for that particular service that you're trying to interact right so in our case um, we've done that for the organization service and only after that I'll be I'll be able to call um, that specific operation right and make sure you know that service is deployed with a username and token authentication and make sure the grants are access and the other grants are provided and after that um, then we, then we also should be able to connect to this. Um, hope this was useful. Thank you for your time.